Hello viewers and welcome once again to another edition of our literary program. Today in this program we are in a very delightful setup in a cozy little home of none other than Antoinette Karmalki. She is the professor of Kasi in the Northeastern Hill University. So we are here in the home and today she is our guest in our literary program. So a very, very warm welcome to you, ma'am, to our literary program. And thank you so, thank much, you so for much for giving us your time. Yeah. It's a pleasure to, yeah. you know, to be in this very cozy setup that we yeah. are here with you today. And uh, it's, uh, I'm very excited indeed that I will be able to talk to you and understand so much of your works that you have done, the translation works that you have also delved into, yes. and many other aspects that we will be talking about today in this program. A warm thank round you. of welcome once again. Thank you, Moshmi. All right, so ma'am, uh, firstly, let us go back into time yeah. and relive those uh, days that we have all left behind yeah. us. And uh, <laughs> yes, so, but then uh, it's, I think it's a nice uh, when we reflect back, uh, you know, we understand how long away we have come. Yeah. So when it comes to you also, you have yes. come a long way, ma'am. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your early life as well as your yeah. interests. Moshmi, to begin with, uh, in the beginning, in the early days of my childhood, my school, the school curriculum and the syllabus, the academics never uh, appealed to me. Okay. Because one, if one is coming from the, uh, from the poor economic background, mm -hmm. so we cannot really have that, you know, that aim to study higher. I will tell you, frankly, that we want to finish my schooling up to class 10 up to class 12, just for the purpose of working as a government clerk. Okay. You know, that is a very uh, sad thing to know. But again, I would like to thank God for this, uh, for he has blessed me with my sisters, my brothers, who supported me with, despite the limited resources, I could pursue my studies and for which I completed my double MA, MA in Khasi okay. and MA in linguistics from Delhi University. Mm -hmm. And my little, I, could, I should say that my little experiences in the academics further motivated me to complete my PhD. And even at that time, I was married and having one child, Mewari. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I should thank my husband also for supporting me and my two little daughters who always be at my side, mm -hmm. you know, to complete my work, you know, to write something, to recollect something when I was teaching in my, in the, in my B.Ed. Okay. Uh, oh, you have done a yeah. B.Ed also? Yeah, I've done my B.Ed. Okay. Then previously I used to teach in B.Ed college. Mm -hmm. That is why these works, two of my works, mm -hmm. have they came out because of the, you know, the paucity of resources for teaching Khasi okay. in the B. Ed. courses. Mm -hmm. At that time, they have only one textbook where the Khasi uh, teachers have to consult mm -hmm. for the method study for the method of teaching Khasi, and that was the book, a very precious book uh, published by the Northeastern Hill University mm -hmm. that it was called Improved Instruction. Okay. So, but actually in that book, there was no mention about the methods of teaching Khasi, the methods of teaching the other subjects as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So that's why the product of these two little books of mine, mm -hmm. right from 1993, were you, you know, but the realization okay. I've come across, I'm aware that there are paucity of uh, resources mm -hmm. to teach Kasi okay. at the B.Ed. level. Right, right. Okay. But then uh, thanks to you that you have uh, been enriching, you know, the materials, the resources. Uh, and yeah. today I think it is in a much better shape. Yeah. Right. I mean, today's students, they have more materials uh, with them available. Yeah. At uh, least. You know, yeah. They better have than some, in your from yes. your time. At least they have sub materials. One is Kajing mm Hikaiktin, -hmm. and the other one is the, the same title, Kajing Hikaiktin, which I published with uh, the late Professor 
etched blue stone. Okay, so these were some of your early yeah, works. Okay. Yeah. Now before we come to your, you know, publications and the works and the translations also that you yeah. have done, ma'am, for the sake of our young uh, readers or sake of our young students, uh, you know, who want to go for higher studies later, can you again uh, differentiate what is the difference between, you know, literature and yes, and yeah, literature. Linguistic? Actually, you know, when we come to the study mm. of literature, mm. literature is a mirror of the society. Some okay. of the critical, the critique have mentioned it that way, mm -hmm. that it is the mirror of the society. Through their creative works, you know, it reflects how the people, how the culture is being taken in their, in their uh, creative works. Mm -hmm. So that is the general meaning of literature. Okay. That's why we have the different genres like poetry, drama, then you have novel, novels. Yeah. novels. So these are the genres which are included in literature. Mm -hmm. But language and linguistics is different completely. Mm -hmm. Language is a means of communication. Mm -hmm. And language is a tool in which one who, ha who wants to write Literature, any part of literature, they want to write drama, or they want to write poetry, they, mm, they compose these things because of this tool okay. of mm, the language is a okay. tool, yeah, yeah. you know. And we have another, another term, which is another discipline, I can say, that it is linguistics. Mm. But linguistics, again, is different from language, language and mm. literature. You know, you, we study linguistics scientifically mm. we collect the data we prove the data and mm. some of the sounds can be proven in the lab okay. you know if they have the lab mm -hmm. you can see the you know the the length of the vowels mm. then we can see how do we pronounce the certain vowels etc mm. and these can be proven uh, scientifically it, okay. so that is the difference, the yeah. main difference between language. So that means linguistic language. is more a scientific study of language. Yes, right? it has mm -hmm. four levels. Mm -hmm. That is the morphology, syntax, phonetics and phonology, and you have the applied linguistics, okay. for which I specialize myself okay. in applied linguistics. Absolutely, okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for clarifying yeah, you. this, uh, you know, these three aspects, yeah. which is, uh, uh, you know, is so important, especially yeah. for the young ones who want yeah. to maybe pursue it in their later student life. Uh, now let's come to some of your publication. As I can see that you have actually uh, written a few works, you've also translated yeah. and you have also written a novel. Yes. Right? Um, no, not a novel, mm. it's a translated work of work. a novel. Okay. So you have delved in, uh, you know, in translation. Yeah. What are some of the translated works that you have done? Uh, the translation, uh, translated works which I've done is La Pra Lut Baro, okay. that is Things Fall Apart, okay. and Dr. Foster's, mm -hmm. in which we have taken from uh, Malu the tragical history of Dr. Foster's. Mm -hmm. okay. So, these so what, are what really interested you towards taking these works and translating their works specially? Uh, actually, if it is not for translation right from the beginning of Khasi literature, mm -hmm. had it not been for, from translation, we we would have not access to the great literature like the Bible, mm. the Ramayana, Mahabharata, and the Gita, right. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Because of the transla translation works, mm. so this can enrich the Khasi language and literature. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I will totally agree with you and that also, you know, because uh, there is a whole lot of uh, treasure uh, yeah. in all culture yeah. and if we can translate each other's works I think we we not only understand yeah. it better it diffuses, also. Yeah, yes. diffuses knowledge mm, absolutely. in humanity right, right this is a big you know, function of literature Transla yeah, uh, translation. translated works also but then ma'am uh, coming uh, to the point of translation also but uh, would you say that a translated work will uh, is able to replicate the original? I mean, do, don't you feel sometimes the essence of it, you know, the, the core of it uh, can sometimes get diluted? Yeah. Can a translated work uh, capture the original work the, just the way it is in its ditto form? Yeah, yeah. 
Let me first, uh, Moshmi, mm. let me first tell you mm. that in the problems, there are problems in mm. translation. Mm. You know, there are linguistic problems, there are grammatical differences, right. there are some expression of, uh, you know, honorific expressions in which we have uh, the different, different languages they have, you know, mm. different forms in which they express in honor of somebody. So these are the honorific terms mm -hmm. in which one language differs from another. Yeah. Yeah. And also we have the different kinship <coughs> terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like for example, in Kasi we have Ukni for uncle. Right. You know, we cannot just say uncle mm. like that. So we call Mahe, Madeng, Marit, right, right. etc. Mm -hmm. So, and considering that also, if we look at the dialectals also, mm. supposing if I translate, if, if we can include the different terms from the other dialects, mm. so it will surely enrich the, the language of the society. Mm -hmm. For example, in Khasi language, now the trend is to, you know, to take, you know, to capture all the, for example, Dhenkali, Dharenkali, mm -hmm. we have taken from Ribhoi dialect. Okay. Okay. So then some of the terms also which I've forgotten, I couldn't remember. Now I've taken also from the, from the different uh, dialects mm -hmm. because dialects also play a very important role in enriching Khasi language mm. and literature. Right, right, yeah. Because in our state itself, in the Khasi Jaintia Hills region, yeah. there are different dialects that are spoken. Yes. Right? Yes. And I believe that some sometimes, uh, you know, some dialects, one person may not be able to relate or understand the other dialect. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There is a lot of difference. Yes. Especially the war Jaintia. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to, to communicate unless we involve a research scholar mm. in linguistics, okay. so you can see the the interface between linguistics and and language okay. in uh, the interface between linguistics and language. Mm -hmm. So we have to involve the research scholars and we write some papers to see the difference between the standard dialect and the other dialects. Right. Ma'am, let's come back again to your translated work. Yeah. Uh, you have translated, uh, you know, Dr. Foster's work. Yeah, Dr. Foster's. What interested you to take up this work and why have you done this? As, uh, well, as I've said earlier, mm -hmm. like to enrich, like we have translated the translated version of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So the same objective, you know, okay. please hear. Mm -hmm. Like we have to enlighten our students, no? mm -hmm. especially myself as a teacher. I want to expose uh, to the students to explore the other literature of the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. But due to the, you know, the lack of knowledge, lack of communication, so therefore if one puts it into our own language, mm -hmm. so therefore the, it'll come, you know, it, it it is an exposure right, uh, right. kind of thing, you know, mm. to introduce the students. And we have also incorporated these two mm. at the PG level, Okay, you know. Mm. That's fantastic. Because I think, uh, you know, no work can be kept into watertight compartments, you know, yeah. if we, if we keep it, it, it stays within yeah. and it doesn't grow yeah. and neither is it uh, interest, uh, you know, it doesn't interest everybody. So yeah. to keep any language growing. I think we have to not only add to the language, you know, yeah. to, to enrich it, but also make sure it is it is translated also yeah. so that others also read it yeah. so as to be able to capture the, the beauty, the yeah. essence of it as yeah. well. So can we just now make you read a portion of your trans from your translated work from Dr. Foster's? Yeah. Let me again repeat, like I have my two mentors, you know, Padma Shri Badab Okay. She is still today my mentor mm -hmm. and Kong Esther Seem, Professor right. Esther Seem. They have motivated me so much to go to the translation, okay. translation work. And here is one of the, her critique, Dr. Esther Seem. Uh, she wrote like this, mm -hmm. 
men ba me dang dan tang shikin ta ba men im bat nang ta men sa sha pen rem khlam wai yang haju phi ki bneng ki ba jutlun shalen tam i don't have the original mm -hmm. but actually this is the thing which kong esther has commented right. that she says it mm, it is not only a replication but you know it comes like mm, you know the creativity right. of my my the interplay of my okay, language okay, in okay. the text right right so a, any any portion from here you would like to read yeah this is the one yeah a u doctor faster slada mila ban ai jing hikai shaklenti baba this is a warning no okay. from an old man to you must be aware of fosters the tra right. the tragedy which he met mm -hmm. at the end of the play da kilenti shisha men poi shakathong kinya lam yami shakajaka shongsuk pinjam ya dot nut pinjau kasnam khle lang bad ummat ummat bad hab da jingkala ba mut namar ki kam jirsi bad kam thala la iutung kabam krun ka dot nut namar ki kam pashir khai bad bapap bad pop bakrao amlang jaka jingirap hnre ke jing is nei fastas ka don ha unong pitim tang da kasnam jung u la ban sa lut ya ki pop jong mi and i would like to say in khasi also and the marba kanika kanika drama la ni kanika sawanka the thought that english ka the miracle uh, play hak tu ka century hak bo shakespeare we imlang but ni u but u malu ti kumta hang ni ngi i ya ka jing don jong kanika ka jing lam jong ka ka jing et kristan ka jing et kristan that is the blood of jesus which can clean can cleanse the Hard or the ya ka pop ka yes kata ka de ka kata ka that is the one of the yeah. thing that you have yeah, yeah translated okay now let's come again because uh, you have so beautifully you know you're delving between the two languages so yeah. easily you know yeah. uh, english to khasi and then khasi to english back again yeah. but the, but the children of today also are doing it uh, but then in a not a uh, uh, very healthy uh, note yeah. because they are speaking a term which is not really used but then uh, you know we can just still use it it is called khalish like they mix khasi and yeah. a little bit of english and that is becoming like a trend yeah uh, is it a worrying trend that uh, children these days are moving away from their mother tongue and not you know concentrating so much in speaking their mother tongue uh, forget the idea because i have seen many you know khasi children taking alternative english yeah. instead of taking mil khasi yeah. and therefore is this worrying as a teacher for you that we have the new generation now who doesn't take so much of interest maybe in their own uh, mother tongue yeah. which they should and what needs to be done therefore to yeah. bring back their interest i think uh one of the efforts one of the main factors which uh we in which the trend is now like this you know mm -hmm. that khalish you have mentioned mm -hmm. is because of the fact of the media you know the mm -hmm. media technology okay but again the parents also has to you know they have to play the role okay. in uh, you know motivating the students to take up khasi and we have some of the non khasis also who have taken up khasi and in one of the schools in shillong there is one uh, nepali student okay she is teaching till today she is teaching khasi, khasi. okay how wonderful so hmm. there is no problem for the khasi the motivation should come from the home. from the parents hmm. yeah from home home domain plays a very important role right right but we cannot deny the fact hmm. also now hmm. students are you know are moving outside shillong they have to learn because english is a window to the world right so they have to learn mm. english also and also uh, they have they should not rem, uh, forget the roots right that is so important yeah that I mean, builds up on, a yeah. character yeah because uh, i think uh, your identity comes from the root yeah. you know and that we should 
continue yeah. to hold on. Yeah, to hold on. Because that is our tradition, that is the heritage. And yeah. we lose it, we lose our identity. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Wonderful uh, to, you know, to speak to you so far, ma'am. But then let us come back again to the Khasi language. How can the Khasi language be enriched further? What kind of, you know, uh, things needs to be done? You know, one is this, that the ch children should... Yeah. take on to their Kasi, yeah. you know, to the MIL, to their, yeah. uh, their own language. What is your uh, you know, opinion as to how the Kasi language can be enriched even more? Yeah, the, w as I've mentioned earlier, translation mm -hmm. is one of the um, ways in which uh, we help the, our literature to grow. Okay. So to enrich our literature. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is that we we cannot uh, deny the fact the importance of the dialects right some of the terms in which the in which the the standard dialect doesn't have we have to you know make our we have to be kind enough mm -hmm. you know, to incorporate the others also and even from the other uh, language family like mm -hmm. the indo aryan mm -hmm. the dravidian we can always uh, borrow some terms right. if we do not have especially mm -hmm. with the with the development of science mm -hmm. and technology so once i have translated one of the methods of teaching computer right. in that is a project mm. in Nilit. Mm -hmm. So I have given an interview that for computer we cannot coin, you know we cannot mm. coin this very word computer. Mm. But let us spell it kas in, in kasi. The way. Okay. K O M P E W T O R. Okay. That is how I spell it. Mm. And this Dr. Foster's also also yes. We do not have that first sound. Mm. So therefore I experiment with my with my aunt who who is uneducated mm -hmm. so i told her to spell to uh, uh, to pronounce this word fosters and she said pastors okay so that's how i you, you incorporate yeah, yeah, incorporate okay. the title okay. in the title okay. right right yeah uh, therefore, some uh, some uh, you know uh, students who are taking up Kasi in the higher level of studies uh, should continuously be researching on the on yes. this language also. Yeah, right? up to and today. Yeah, today also we we have a research work till PhD where mm. students can write in Kasi. Okay. So that is also another way how to as to how to enrich mm. our literature and language. language true ma'am now quickly we are almost running out of time but then i had so much more to actually ask yeah. you but then one question that comes to my mind and i would like to ask you quickly also uh, isn't it also important that we uh, you know when we are translating from english to kasi vice versa from kasi yeah. to other language so that you know we have so many folk tales so many novels so many little stories you yeah. know that also other people can understand can read yeah actually when they really implement this uh, three language formula mm -hmm. of the of the language education we they do not they really implement halfway mm -hmm. you know as to give us a chance to read Kasi or English as a second language they should you know the the government the language policy should offer another uh, Indo Aryan or another an, another Dravidian language or another Tibeto Burman language so okay. that in the northeast we can also translate from khasi to angami or to manipuri or to mizo mm -hmm. etc but you know the language as i've told you that the language formula has not been uh, properly taken care okay. in order to introduce but again another problem and as la linguists i can see i can foresee the problems why to to create a problems upon the the students with this language we understand that india is a multilingual society mm -hmm. it is a multicultural society so why to burden the students by introducing one language into another language okay. you know it depends upon the aptitude of the of the of a single individual whether it, we want to learn Mizo or Lushai, we want to uh, learn Assamese, a neighboring right, state. Right. So it depends upon the aptitude mm. of the child. Because if we really implement the language education policy, then 
the burden will be on the students. students. Okay. So you think I hope that you they, understand yeah, my, yes, my absolutely, point. Absolutely, yes. So you think it, there shouldn't be any compulsion in it, but then it should be open enough so yeah, that those be who open, have yeah. interest and the aptitude can take it yeah, up, right? Yeah. Okay. So almost winding up uh, this conversation with you, I could actually go on and on with you. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then when you are not writing, when you are not teaching, what yeah. are your other interests, ma'am? My interest is trekking actually okay. oh, wow. so okay. recently also my with my daughter and my husband in Janty Hills mm -hmm. we went up to uh, uh, Amkoi okay. you have heard that place right. yes, Amkoi yes, yes. then I walk from Nongjurong to Niryang okay. walking right. and I walk from Latsmith also till Maurang Kinang ah. <laughs> that is my leisure time. Yeah, that that's one of the you know yeah. hobby that you pursue. And also fishing. Of oh, course. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to know the other side of you. You know, I yeah. mean, uh, that besides writing, besides translating. So as we are almost coming to the end, would would I once again request you to end this uh, literary program of ours by reading out something? Yeah, uh, yeah. I I have one message for the students mm -hmm. that is. Uh, I'll tell them, I'll motivate them. Till today, I've been doing in the classroom. Keep going. Do not be disheartened. Work hard and then you'll surely uh, get the success. Absolutely. That is so would, would, would you would like to read something bef I mean, as we you know, draw curtain to this literary program? Can we once again uh, hear you read from, your, from one of your works? Okay. I'll read this one. This is from which? This book? is from... La Pralat Baro. He is an African writer. Right. Okay. U commissioner ula let not nangta, but we alam de but line is soundwood kishipai badu. Hakis nem kiba boon kiba ula tre, tes eb ban wanra yaka jing shai, hakajaka kiba pear jungari Africa. See, I did not write Africa, but I write Africa. Okay. Africa. Ula yo lum boon tili ki a ki a. Here, la ban tho shilinong shapang jung u. Let's see what lada kam day e shilinong. Hendre la ban shun yo tang. Hak benta jung ka jing tho. Hak a dee kapor. Ula ban dep ula dep jeet lapa yaka kilting jung ka kot. Hadien bo la dep per kat lapa. Kakilteng jong kata kakot kalong ka jing wanra ya ka jing shai ha ki dry ri ha ki tan basyati jong ka naija. Okay, quickly in two lines if you could just translate it for our, uh, you know, our other audience who are watching this program. Uh, the, just in this two is, lines, yeah. No, it requires, you know, not less than two hours to discuss this book because right. this is a post-colonial. This, yeah. this portion, he was just asking, hmm. you know, the deputy commissioner, Having done his, uh, you know, all the, because it is a post-colonial literature, we have seen that they have spoiled the culture and tradition of the African people, especially in Igbo society. So till, till today, why we say it is a post-colonial uh, post work of Chinua Achibi? It's not my work, but it is Chinua Achibi because this deputy commissioner was mentioning about his project in which he says in this uh, in this novel that he's going to write something about these people because they need a lot of you know uh, they need a lot of education they need a lot of uh, you know improvement so he said he he will mention this tragic hero over here he will mention a little bit of him but the the rest he will concentrate it on bringing light to the natives in the southern part of niger right nigeria okay that we all know if we, i mean we will not go into the history of yeah, you know yeah. america and africa yeah, yeah. we know it uh, yeah. what had really happened to the natives yeah. you know once the co uh, they were colonized but then uh, you know hearing from you uh, and especially the last bit that you have given as a little message for our young uh, yeah. you know viewers who are watching this program that you must continue to follow yeah. your path yeah. and don't give up at <laughs> the end of the day yeah. you will find success yeah. Yeah. 
we wish you many more successes in Thank your you. endeavor you know to writing to translation and also to Thank you. you know in your teaching field yeah. and your other activities yeah. thank you so much ma'am for giving us your time and thank the you, speaking Mishma. so wonderfully uh, you know about so many aspects that we discussed today yeah. in our literary program thank, thank you, you once again and we wish you well thank you well then dear viewers uh, i'm sure you were uh, deeply involved in this conversation as much as i was hearing from uh, ma'am Antoinette about so many aspects that we once again understood uh, through her about writing, about translation, about uh, what, ne what more needs to be done to enrich the Khasi language and how the young ones should also, you know, play a role in enriching this language and also take interest in their own mother tongue. Thank you so much for watching this program and uh, we certainly hope you will join us next time again when we will be back with another of our guests in our literary program. From all of us here from this wonderful cozy home of Ma'am Antoinette Karmalki, it's bye-bye.